no, 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 no. Go get your own stuff. If you want to do what you want to do, you got to do what them folk want you to do because that's them people's stuff. If you learn how to respect another man's garden, the Lord will bless you with your own. Look, check this out here. He says, I want you to speak to him. Tell him to bring me an offering. Tell him to bring me an offering. And look at here. I need to talk to a few people that always want to try to come empty handed. I need to tell you that's what the problem is. That's what the problem is. The Lord said, look, tell them to bring an offering. I need you to come before me with something. If you can't come before, you need to come before God with something. If it ain't nothing but to say, Lord, listen, I give you the fruit of my lips. I bless you with the fruit of my lips, God. If it's nothing but to say, God, I give you this nasty attitude. Lord, I don't want it no more. I give it to you for you to take it away. Always come before the Lord with some offering, with something before him. Don't always come before God looking for something from him, but not ever giving him something from you. Please give God. Please, please, please give God an offering. Watch yourself. Now watch yourself. He says, speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. That's what it said. Watch that heart now. He says that give it willingly with his heart. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, ye shall take my offering. I, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Can I tell you something? One of the struggles that you may have may be because of the condition of your heart. One of the issues that you have may be because of the condition of your heart. That condition of the heart. Watch the condition of the heart. Watch it now. Watch it. Watch it. Now, I don't want to deal with the rest of this. Like when it starts in verse 3, when he tells him, he says, of the offering, you're going to take you shall take of them. You're going to get gold, silver, brass. I need to tell y'all something about that. Just starting in verse 3. I can't really work the whole text like I want to. Yeah, I, I really wish I had time. But it's not going to permit for me to just utilize this whole text, this whole chapter to show you the thing. But I need to show y'all what they offered. It says in verse 3, and this is the offering which you shall take of them. I want you to get some gold, some silver, and some brass. Look, why are you still trying to come to God? with chump stuff huh why why you still try no good god why is you still trying to come to god with chump stuff what's the problem huh why do you feel like it's more important for you to give the best over to uh the, the dealership you know why do you feel like it's for you to give the best to the restaurant for a meal that's only going to stay in your gut for a little while and then you're going to pass through. It's going to pass through your bowels. Why? Why? He says, no, I need you to tell them when they give the offering that I need them to give some gold, some silver, some brass. He starts calling out some things. You look all down through and you will see literally what he says. If you go to verse 6, I'm in, I'm, I'm in Exodus 25. Go down to verse 6. He says, look, tell them to give some oil for the light. Uh, look at that. He says, tell them to give some oil for the light. All right. Uh, I'm going to provide some light, but you need to give some oil. Spices for the anointing oil. God says, look, I'm doing my part, but you got to give your part too. It's something you got to bring to the table too. You can't be just expecting me to do everything. Something you got to bring to the table too. He says, and for, and for sweet incense. Okay, let's go down a little bit more. Go down to verse 8 now. Exodus 25 and verse 8 it says, and let them make me a sanctuary. Right there. There it is. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. I need to talk to just a couple of people that's struggling with whether what their calling is in God. I need to talk to you tonight. If you're not struggling with your call in God and the fact that you know that the Lord has called you to build a sanctuary for him that the Lord has literally given you a ministry for you to be able to do. If if you if you're not that person that's struggling with that, then I need you to step to the side and be an intercessor for me. I want you to pray with me that I'm able to reach the people that need to hear what the Lord is saying because there are some people that's struggling with the fact of what they should be doing. They are literally struggling with the fact and the call, 
that has been placed on their life. They're wondering why they keep falling back into sin and why they just can't keep, can't seem to just TKO, let it go. And you know, it's because they literally uh, are not solidified in the fact that God has called them uh, to do a great work. Why? Because maybe somebody needs to tell you that this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Somebody needs to tell you to give you the okay that yes, this is what the Lord would say for you. He says, look, I need you to build me a sanctuary. I need you to build that women's ministry that's on your heart. Yeah, I, I need you to build that media platform that's on your heart, right? Uh-huh, yeah, I need you to build that because, see, I need to tell somebody what I just heard anyway. You already got a, 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 a fan base of people that are watching you anyway that are literally looking at you anyway and they are literally, you even got some copycats. I'm going to back up off of that one. But you even got some copycats. So, you know, so I just need to let you know that what you're hearing is from the Lord and it's okay for you to go in that direction. It's your season and it's your time, okay? It is your season and it is your time, he says. And let, he said, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. He says, I, I need y'all to catch what he says with this now. He says, I need you to let them make me a sanctuary. I, I need you to let the people that I have called you to make me a sanctuary. All right? I, 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 I need y'all to catch the terminology. Don't go too fast. Check it out. He says, let them. I need you to have them to bring me an offering. That's what it said first. All right. I need you to have them to bring me an offering. And then the things that they bring me needs to be things of value. Because out of the things that they bring me, that is what's going to build the sanctuary. See, listen to me. Listen to what I'm saying to you. People care about when they when they have a part in stuff. People will take better care of things when they have a part in it. God said, I want them, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Let them do it. Don't you take on the whole nature of it. I just need you to be the overseer of it, but let them do the work concerning that needs to be done. Let them put in the work of what needs to be done. Good God Almighty. And verse 9 says, this is Exodus 25 and 9, according to all that I showed can I tell somebody? Don't worry about it. God got you some people, okay? I need, I need, I needed to tell. So I needed that somebody needed to hear me. And don't worry about it. God got some people assigned to you. Don't, 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 don't worry about it. Don't, don't, don't. Uh, uh-uh, uh. Don't even get in. The, don't even get that in your head. I heard it. Uh, uh. Uh-uh, listen. Go on, go on, and just go on and extract that because God got some people already set in order and set in place that is going to help. Look, check this out. Verse nine. According to all that I show thee, He says after the pattern of the tabernacle. It's the pattern. Watch this. I need y'all to pay attention to the pattern. Now, I, I'm going to talk to y'all tonight about the pattern, the pattern, the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof. Even so shall ye make it. All right. So it's the pattern. Can I, can I just let, let you know tonight that God has given you a pattern? God has given you a pattern. God, help me, please. God has given you a pattern out there. Lord, I wish they would hear you, Jesus Christ. I wish they would hear you, Father. I'm sitting in front of this wind machine fan, and I feel like I feel like I'm spinning just as fast as it's spinning, God. I feel like a wind machine right now, Lord. Listen, the Lord has given you a pattern. God, help me, please. Oh, God, God, God has given you a pattern, and there are people that the Lord has set, good God Almighty, that will help you with the pattern. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. He says, let them do it. Let them do it. Okay, look. I, I, I let, let, let me go on down a little bit further. <coughs> let me go down <clears throat> just a little bit further. I'm going to show y'all something here. He starts giving out a plan. Verse 18 was so beautiful to me. Look, watch this in verse 18. He says, thou shalt make two cherubims of gold. A beaten work shall thou make them. In the two ends of the mercy seat, and make one cherubim on one end and the other cherubim on the other end. Even of the mercy seat shall thou make the cherubims on the two ends 
thereof. Now, he's given Moses the actual blueprint of how this is supposed to be. But he said, I want you to let the people make it. I'm giving you the blueprint, but I want you to let the people make it. Now, catch it now. I'm giving you the blueprint, but I want you to let the people make it. Now, go down to verse 22. Verse 22. He says, In there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. God, amen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to meet with you, the Lord says, and I'm going to commune with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I have give, which I will give thee in, give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to meet with you. When everything gets in order like it's supposed to be, the Lord says, I'm going to meet with you. Listen, please stop being afraid to do what the Lord has set upon your heart to do. He's going to meet with you. And he's got some people, Jesus Christ. He's got some people set in place. And you got to understand and hear the people that the Lord has set in place they got what's needed because the Lord said tell them to bring me an offering y'all 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 don't hear you God help me God they don't hear you tonight uh, he said tell them to bring me an offering so that lets you know uh, that the people have what is needed in order to do what needs to be done he says tell them to bring me an offering and I'm going to let them build uh, oh Jesus Christ I'm going to let them build uh, a sanctuary for me good God almighty can I tell you Stop being afraid of doing what God has instructed for you to do, what you know is on your heart to do, because you're worried about how it's going to happen, who's going to be there, who's going to do that. No, no, no. You may just have to hit you a 40 days, uh, just like how Moses had to. Moses had to hit a 40 days in order to get this. Uh, and in the midst of getting this, the problem with Moses was, was Moses was wanting to take and assume the responsibility of some things that the Lord had told him to let the people do. Get out the way. Move. Get out the way. Let God do what it is that he has set to do. Let the people labor. Let the people work. Let the people build uh, to do what needs to be done here. Good. Uh, he says and I'm going I'm to commune with you. I'm going to commune with you. Let's go a little bit further. I got to get. I, I can't take the whole thing but I'm going to give y'all as much of it as I can to make sense of it for you. Let's go down a little bit further. Now, go to verse 37. Verse 37. Exodus 25, verse 37. It says, And thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof. God, I love you. <laughs> and they shall light the lamps thereof. Check it out now. He says, thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and then they shall light the lamps thereof, that they may give light over against it. So, you're going you, you gonna to start it, okay, because you're obedient to God, then they're going to follow suit to come in to be obedient to God. And their obedience is going to give light. All right, verse 37. You're going to obey God. You're going to make a commitment tonight that you're going to obey God to do what the Lord would want you to do, to be the voice the Lord would have for you to be. You're going to accept that. And in your accepting that, the people that the Lord has assigned to you, those that will be uh, with you, they're going to step into it. And then that light is going to shine as well. Okay, all right. And then it's going to give light over against it. Okay, over against it. Against what? Against any opposition that's trying to come. Against any opposition that's trying to come. It's going to give light against any opposition that is trying to come. I'm trying to tell you hard as I can. It's going to give light against any opposition that is trying to come. Verse 38 says, and the tongues thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. Okay. Okay. Shall be of pure gold. Verse 
gold. Verse 39, of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. Verse 40, verse 40, check this out here. Verse 40 says, and look that thou make them after their pattern which was shown thee in the mount. Now, check out verse 40. Verse 40.